Hi, welcome to the second edition of Charge Bee's uh, Whiteboard Monday. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, a key uh, point that most merchants would want to know about, which is how to avoid chargebacks in recurring transactions. Right? These chargebacks happen because of uh, three reasons. Right? They do not know who is charging them. Right? They have forgotten the name of the service. Yeah, it happens. Uh, second one is why they are charging them for what service right? and then how much are they charging them for. If there is ambiguity in any of these three things then yeah, customers might apply for a chargeback. Uh, but so how can you avoid chargebacks? Right? It's not like you cannot avoid it. So how do you make sure you make these things explicit? To start with, who is charging them? Make sure the you when you apply for a merchant account or even your existing merchant account you could ask them to update what is called as a DBA name. Right? That's the name that is displayed in the credit card statement of your customer. That would So if your company name is ABC Corp and your product name that your customers are familiar with is let's say invoicing app, make sure you uh, put your DBA name with invoice app, invoicing app.com so that your customers recognize the name of the application, right? not ABC Corp, if they are not familiar, not familiar with it. Similarly, in the DBA name, you could attach, right, have a suffix with your phone number, a toll-free number that they can reach out to. Uh, by mentioning this, you are giving them a chance to reach out to you first, then reaching out to uh, your their card issuing bank and applying for a chargeback, right? So, uh, if they don't recognize it at all, or they are not happy with the service, give them a chance to call up that number on the credit card statement immediately, and then resolve the issue, right? So, it's a, it's a great tip that is there, yeah, that was given by 37 Signals, right? That's they have been learning a lot of stuff over the period, over the last few years and they shared it in a blog. So that's something we could use. Uh, the second one is how do you make sure uh, the correspondences are very clear, right? So if the customer is upgrading, downgrading or changing the term of their application, right? Uh, let's say from a yearly plan, they are changing back to a monthly plan. How are you going to apply this charge, right? Make sure first thing, acknowledge every request that comes in from the customer over phone or through the application. Second one, you act immediately, right? You schedule the change immediately. Don't let it open, leave it open. If the customer is making a cancellation request, of course, you need to make sure you do a root cause analysis and find out why they are leaving you. At the same time, do not wait for all these things. Make sure you apply the cancellation immediately or at least schedule the cancellation at the end of the term, right? By this, you would not annoy the customer if you happen to miss the cancellation, right? Of course, customers, I would be personally annoyed if I make a cancellation request and if it's not happening and then it, it reflects again in my credit card. If I'm charged again for a service I did not want, right? So uh, it applies to everyone. So make sure you take actions immediately. And the third one is make sure your policy is very, very unambiguous. So on the website, make it clear if you do not offer a refund as a policy, make it very clear in your website. And of course, in your email communication, when you are acknowledging the request and sending the transaction mails back to the customer, make sure you specify saying why you are not going to offer a refund and then uh, make sure you reference that as well, right? You could do that. Of course, if you know, if you think it's a fair policy, fair on your part to actually refund the customer, go ahead and do it. You could make it as an exception. Or if your policy itself says like uh, the case of uh, uh, certain companies, if you want to offer a refund as a standard policy, no questions asked, definitely go ahead and do that. And uh, if there are terms around your application, let's say your 12 month contract, you are charged giving them a discounted price and if the contract, if they, but you still charge them monthly, but if they actually switch over to a monthly plan without the commitment, you might charge them slightly higher fee, right? Uh, so in, in such cases, make sure you tell them that you are, charge, you are going to charge them slightly higher amount for the period, uh, for the period in um, that they are cancelling for, and uh, they use it for, and then apply those rates, right? But make sure it's unambiguous. Right? By doing these basic three basic things correctly, you will be able to avoid chargebacks as much as possible. Thank you.